Hi, good morning. Maura Dolan here. Delighted to have a, a chance to chat to you all. Today, I'm going to introduce you to Dawn Campbell, who is our accreditation representative from the IAPC and M. And Dawn is going to share with us some vital information on accreditation. Thank you, Moira. Thanks for the opportunity to meet your students. And yes, that's exactly what we're going to do in this very short uh, info video. Um, so we'll kick start with your first question. So Dawn, would you please describe to us the difference between accreditation versus certification? Absolutely. Yes, there is some um, misrepresentation and, and confusion around this. You know, when you come out of Moira's course, uh, which is an accredited course, um, you get a certificate uh, and that's fantastic. But accreditation is one stage higher than certification because accreditation verifies all the skills, all the qualifications uh, that you've got to this point. So a typical example, as I've shared here with you, is around the world in the field of education. Students go to university and they receive a degree which is a certificate, um, but it's the universities themselves, or in Moira's case, the training provider that have had their course accredited. And that's what makes her course stand out in a crowded market uh, where people are choosing where do they want to train to be a coach or a mentor. So it's verification of pulling together all your skills, experience and qualifications. And then you've got that. It's almost like a kite mark, uh, Moira, that you're accredited. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, Dawn, would you tell me what is the reason uh, that there's, a, a, you know, what is the reason that accreditation status matters? Mm. I think it's becoming increasingly vital, Moira, um, particularly as a key differentiator between you and me uh, as accredited practitioners uh, compared to non accredited practitioners. You know, in the UK, there's 130,000 people calling themselves coaches. Now, some of them are trained, some of them aren't, some have been on a weekend uh, diploma online course and so on. And there's the whole gamut of um, uh, professional training courses out there. However, when you've pulled it all together and you've had your uh, training and your certification authenticated and your testimonials verified and you've had your uh, skills assessed in a live uh, assessment environment, then accreditation becomes a really important differentiator between us and non-accredited practitioners. It's all about um, giving your clients uh, that all important uh, quality standard. It proves that you care, that you're supporting you, them, that you're investing in yourself and you're protecting your client's well-being. So it's about credibility, confidence, integrity and saying, you know, I sign up to the industry standards and ethics. I've signed the code of professional conduct. I am part of a body um, that only accredits the best in class or as I like to call it, Moira, the 1% club. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, let's turn this around on its head. So why was accreditation important to you as a practitioner and also getting accredited for your course, Moira? Absolutely. Well, both for me personally to be accredited, people will sometimes ask you, you know, what's the uh, what what is the credibility behind your your qualification? Mm -hmm. And as a training provider to know that the course content itself has been rigorously assessed and evaluated mm -hmm. and and marked on a you know on a robust through a robust methodology is very important to make sure that people are aware that they are getting a very professional well accredited award themselves yeah yeah that's right and i think the people who come on your course they can understand the uh, importance of their own accreditation because mm -hmm. one of the criteria for coming on your course was that they picked it because it was accredited. So mm -hmm. it kind of stands to reason when they come out of your course, if they think about how a client's going to identify them as the practitioner they want to work with, having their own personal accreditation is, is pretty key to that. Absolutely. Okay, so what I would also like some information and clarification on Dawn is, 
what is the return on investment mm -hmm. for students and course participants yeah. for joining the IAPCNM? That's a good question, Moira. And obviously, as an accreditation body, the only thing we do is a credit. We've been doing that since 1998. So we accredit individuals, training providers, and universities, etc. However, over the years, we've developed a range of value added benefits that absolutely give you a massive return on investment. I think I can split them into two categories. But anybody who wants to download the sort of evolving leaflet from the website uh, is more than welcome to do that. Um, the two areas I would say are CPD, continuous professional development. So we have regular monthly um, conference calls uh, and webinars to help our practitioners develop their skills, their knowledge, their capabilities. And then the other side is the business building skills. And this is perhaps more important, Moira, because uh, we found that uh, students uh, leave their coaching or mentoring academy, perhaps with distinctions, and they're great coaches and mentors, but they lack the business acumen to get a return on investment from their training. Um, so, they, they don't know how to sell me PLC. They don't know how to do sales and marketing, uh, et cetera. Because obviously as a solopreneur, you, you know, as you know, we wear a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've developed uh, this 12-month uh, self-teach complementary um, e-program so that new practitioners and also established practitioners who are struggling can dip into any of these calls and it will take them through creating a business. Once um, you do become accredited, we also set you up with this um, four or five page PDF action list, which talks you through, and it's a tick box exercise, so you can print it and say, right, today I'm going to do this, tick it, it's done. So it takes you through the orientation of the website and the secure members area, and how do I uh, create that uh, unified message on social media, uh, et cetera. So there's quite a lot of support in the action uh, checklist. Additionally, we've just um, written a book, How to Win and Keep Clients. So this is absolutely a must for any practitioner who wants to build trusting long-term relationship with their clients. And how we communicate all those wonderful value-added benefits is in our weekly bulletin. Uh, so if you subscribe to that and you follow us on social media, you'll never miss out on any of all the wonderful stuff we have for you. Okay, thank you for that. And I know certainly that the weekly bulletin is full of very interesting tips and facts and, and is hugely supportive for people in the coaching space. Um, so just explain maybe a little, Dawn, about the accreditation process. Yeah, of course. Uh, we're totally automated. So in principle, as long as there's no techie issues, it's really simple. You go online, uh, you choose the most relevant status for yourself. Um, so, for instance, if you've got 60 training hours and 60 practical coaching hours or mentoring hours, and this is obviously for the, the newbies into the industry, then you're going to become an accredited practitioner coach. Um, but you can also become a senior, um, a master and a fellow. And we're here for the whole of the journey uh, that you, you have in this profession. Coming through Moira's course, you attract a discount of at least £200 uh, saving compared to people who have come through non-accredited routes. So you pay online, you choose your status online, and then you'll receive an email detailing exactly the evidence portfolio that we require. Um, as an absolute minimum, as a practitioner, you're going to have a 30-minute assessment call. That increases by 10 minutes for every level that you go so 40 minutes for a senior, 50 minutes for a master, and so on. So that's a live assessment call. Uh, we're very much capabilities-based rather than competency-based. We want to, you to demonstrate your, your skills and capabilities rather than write an essay about how you could do this. You'll ref, uh, complete a self-reflection. That's just five, 10 minutes. What did I get out of that assessment call? What have I learned? What are my CPD points that I'm gonna concentrate on between now and when I upgrade to senior? You'll sign the, the professional code of conduct, you'll fill out the standards and ethics questionnaire, and then on successful completion, we'll give you your logo and your certificate, 
and various other pieces of material that you can promote on your website to help you stand out in a crowded market and say to the world, hey, I'm an accredited practitioner, come and hire me. Now, this is valid for three years, providing you update your annual renewal fee every year. And at the end of every three years, the likes of Moira and her course and myself, we all go through a mini assessment just to check no bad habits have been developed and what was originally accredited is still being accredited. Okay. Yep, thank you. And again, I, I know my, for myself, Dawn, that mini uh, assessment each year is hugely beneficial mm -hmm. in helping a person to stay focused on exactly. and plans for the forthcoming year. So there's, there's benefit in it at all. So thank you for that. Okay, and when would be a good time for a person to apply for professional status? Mm. Well, it really depends on what the outcome is. Uh, you know, if we begin with the end in mind, if one of your students is on your course because they want to set up their own practice as a result of training with you, Moira, I would suggest they do join us sooner rather than later. So you can, you can do both in tandem. Now, of course, you're not going to become accredited until you've completed uh, Moira's course and you've got her certificate and you've got the, the prerequisite 60 practical coaching hours. But what you can do is join us on day one of Moira's course and have access to all the CPD and more importantly, the business building resource library. So as you're studying with Moira, you could actually still be downloading articles and uh, templates such as, you know, how do I write a contract? Um, you could download the um, generic complaints procedure. You could benefit from the discounted website and building and, and hosting package. So there's a lot of material that is already there. So you don't have to wait until you finish Moira's course to say, right now I'm going to start building my business. You can do the two in tandem. So the sooner the better. Thank you, Dawn. So what else do you think might be relevant, Dawn? Okay, well, as, as Gandhi says, you know, your future depends on what you do today. So, you know, if you're sat here today thinking, hmm, perhaps not now, I'll do it later. You know, you've got to ask yourself, if not now, when? And what is, uh, what, what sort of information do you need in order to make that decision so you can start benefiting? And perhaps more importantly, ask yourself what is the value that you're going to be losing if you don't take action sooner rather than later. So if you've got any questions, obviously ask Moira or come through to me. Um, otherwise, we'll look forward to welcoming you, you to our global community of properly trained and professionally accredited practitioners soon. Thank you, Dawn. That has been very informative and very helpful, very clear. Thank you very oh, much. Lovely. Thank you. And I look forward to meeting your students too. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye.